help you keep it. Because I do believe it is good as a Christian for every day, but especially at the beginning of the year, to try to make that next year a better deal with getting closer to God. Because every day we should get closer to God, right? That should be our goal. When we wake up, our goal should be, okay, God, today I want to seek you. I want to get closer to you and all that. But we're going to talk it in the in the year spec, uh, aspect. Now, I am going to go off a rabbit hole here in a second because one of my goals, and I try to pick three goals that these aren't all the goals. I just picked the three that I think a lot of people probably will have will say. And I think, honestly, I'm going to encourage everyone here, or at least listening, not everyone because I know everyone is a little different, but probably should – I would say all three of these are good for everyone here. Okay. Now the first one that I wrote down, and then I'm going to go on a little rabbit trail for a minute because I found a lot. Of, after I said this, I started thinking, what is the research on this? So I did some research. And my first goal is this, less screen time. So what is a screen time? Obviously, what is some of the screen times? What is screen time? Well, TV, all right? Cell phone, iPhone, uh, iPad, maybe it's computer at work, laptop. There's a lot of different things nowadays that consider screen time. Now, when we were kids, it was pretty much TV. That was it. That was your screen time. Maybe go to the movies, just the big screen. And I think it's funny, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was thinking about that is, I don't think it's a coincidence that more and more kids I see wear glasses. Because I remember, I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, my mom used to always say, don't sit too close to TV, you're going to have to wear glasses. One. Well, apparently I did, and now I wear glasses. I don't know. But she used to yell at me all the time. How many got yelled at about being too close to TV? Right? I don't know if there's any truth into that. I don't know. I think maybe. I don't know. But I always remember parents, grandparents yelling at me, saying, Get, you're too close to TV, back up. But, but first, before I get to the that part, I'm going to say, the goal is this. So w the first goal is less screen time. So then when me and some are talking, well, what we should do is when we have a goal, we should have a scripture to go along with our goal. That way it stays biblical. So my scripture for this one is simple. Psalms 127.3, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring and reward from him. And you say, well, what does that goal have to do with children? Well, two things. One, my time with my children. If I can spend less time watching something, even looking at my Facebook, because here's the thing, because I know a lot of people are thinking negative things, but even your positive screen time, and let's be honest, nowadays, are, because of the iPhone, there's a lot of good, you can do a devotion on your phone, okay, there's nothing wrong with that, you can look up scripture, you can do a study, you could be looking up, if you're in school, you can look up some classwork, I mean, there's good positive things you can do with screen time, okay, so I'm not saying that all screen time is bad, don't get me wrong, but even your you, even if you limit some of your good screen time to spend more time with your children. And then the second part is I have small children still. Some of you don't, but maybe have grandchildren who come over. So because the children are a heritage from the Lord, I got to look at, okay, well, am I doing my best to keep them from having too much screen time? Okay? So it's a two-part. And then as they get older, then the question is, what are they? what is on their screen time? Now, in our house, there's a rule. There's certain – they usually have to be in anywhere where we can look at their screen anytime. Now, they're still young, but we already set that rule now. So when they get to be 16, 17, they already know the rule. I better be able to walk in to see what's on your screen at any time at all times because I want to know what's on their screen because just like I said, there's a lot of ne positive. We also know there's a lot of negative. As a matter of fact, unfortunately, one of the things I've researched was – when you look at the top ten websites, probably about half of them are pornography that are looked at S on cell phones and all that kind of stuff. So I need to know what are they looking at. Okay. But so then the next step is, okay, so I wrote the goal. I got a verse that gives me inspiration to do this goal. Okay, there's a biblical reason to do this because screen time, because and I'll get into it, probably the number one thing that takes your – in today's society, other than actually being at work, the second thing that probably takes your time away from your kids nowadays is screen time because you're on your phone. You're looking at Facebook. Like I said, first thing I do 
you know, after prayers is I look at my phone. Why? Because I'm looking, not for negative reasons, because I'm looking for messages, right? You're looking at your messages. Did anyone call? Did someone text me? I look at Facebook. I look and see who I'm the type of person. I look at all the birthdays. If your birthday pops up on Facebook, you're getting a happy birthday from me. Why? Because that's a way to communicate to all the people that I don't talk to. So at least once a year, you're going to get a message from me. Happy birthday. Okay? But that's what I do. But most people are like that nowadays. One of the first things you do, you're going to listen to see, did anyone text me through the night? Is there anything? Okay? But after I do that, then the second th thing is, okay, now I have to write some steps. How am I going to do that? Because, like I said, it's not just enough to say, I'm going to limit screen time. How am I going to do it? And Summer's watching, so... Summer, I did my homework. Here we go. Number one, have certain times when screens are not allowed to be on. So what we're going to do is me and Summer will get together, and we'll figure out and say, hey, guys, from a from 1 to 2 or whatever time it is, we're going to say, no one's allowed to watch screens. And that includes me and Summer, not just them, nobody. Step two, have certain days or yeah, days – where we can play games or read. We do read to our kids, but I mean, like, increase the reading. So there's something else to do, meaning to get, especially, like, if you're going to get your kids, especially if you have kids who play games a lot, well, you got to have an alternative for them, you know? So that is step. So why did I share that with you? I know you're like, well, Joe, that's your goal. It's just to show you that I have steps. So if you're going to make a goal, my, my suggestion to you is, like I said, have a scripture to back your goal up. That way you have a biblically reason for what you're doing. Because as Christians, everything we do should be biblical. And two, it's good to have a step to get there. Because if you don't have a step to get there, then it's easy just to say, I'm going to do it, and then you don't, there's no follow through. Because then you can go back to what you wrote and say, okay, well, this is what we said we're going to do. Did we do it? Now, this is where I'm going to get off just for a second, because I want to talk about screen time. Because it just got me thinking. I was like, man, I wonder what's going on. So I did some research. So let me just say this, okay? Now let's just say suppose I watch and talk about myself, okay, or you or whoever. But let's, just, let's just suppose I watch two hours of TV, which is not unreasonable. If you think you watch news, then you watch just one movie or just two shows, before you know it, that's two hours. Okay, so if you watch one movie of TV, that's two hours. Most movies are right now, they about two hours, okay? And then I spend three hours on the phone. And I know you might say three hours on the phone, but trust me, I guarantee you most of us spend more hours than we think on the phone because I'm talking about any time you search, or even if you're just every five minute adds up. Five minutes adds up. Ten minutes it adds up, okay? Two hours on a computer or laptop, whether at work or whatever. And then 30 minutes or so playing a video game. That adds up to be seven and a half hours a day, Okay. That's 52 hours in a week, which is basically two days of my week is on the screen time. That would be 104 days a year, okay? And 50 years, because if you do the average of average adult spends 60 years of life, because once you hit adult, you usually live to be 70 or whatever. That would be 14 point two years watching a screen. I know right now you are looking bad at me. But I guarantee if you really check yourself, and I'm talking about at work too, see, because we're talking about all day. A lot of you, yes, you have to watch a screen at work, but you're still sitting in front of a screen how many hours. That's what we're talking about. Because not all this is leisure, by the way. This is work-related. This is texting. Because, like, with me, with the youth, I have to be on – the only way I can communicate with them is on Facebook. And sometimes I'm on – with certain ones, I could be two hours one night just talking to them, calming them down or whatever. Okay, so again, I'm not talking about all negative things. I'm just talking about in general. All right? That sounds like a lot, right? It does. But let me give you some research. This is Market Watch 2016. Their survey in 2016 is this. The average American spends 11 hours a day watching, reading, listening, or simply interacting with the, with the media, screen time. So that's four hours more than what I said, 11, okay? 
So I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not me, because when you think screen time, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I know that's the kid sitting down. Well, let's do some more research. This is eMarketer. In night, this is 2019. The average U.S. adult will spend two hours and 55 minutes on a smartphone. Three hours, basically. The average adult. Okay? Yes, I know. So for some, here. Yeah. Three hours just on a smartphone. Okay? And that's the ad that's adults, not kids. Let me verify that. And then let's talk about TV. Okay? Because a lot of people are thinking, oh, it, well, let me go. I haven't got the TV yet. Hold on. And then here's another thing, too. In 2017, this is Inc.com. According to the latest research, on average, a child gets his or her first smartphone at age 10. Some st same study found that 50% of children 12 already have social media accounts like Facebook. Now, Drew right now is mad because I told him he can't have a phone yet. He's like, 10? You're right. Because, and I know not everyone here is fond of him, but Bill Gates says... In his opinion, and I'm talking to someone who I went with him because he's a tech person, he did not give his children a phone until they're 14, any of his children. And most researchers that actually are in the tech industry agree with him. So most of your tech people say, don't give a kid a smartphone until they're 14, but yet most people do it at age 10. So, Drew, you're still waiting until you're 14, like I said. And it's kind of funny because that's pretty much what I told Drew before I even read this. I think maybe when you're 14. All right. Now let's talk about TV. Because, again, when we think TV, I know most of you are thinking TV. Yeah, there's kids watching cartoons. Well, here we go. Whoop. 59% of this age group watch live TV. What do you think that age group is? 59% of the people who watch live TV, what do you think that age group is? 55 and older. So almost 60% of people who are watching live TV. Now, let me tell you the difference because I know when we say TV, it means lots of things nowadays. Live TV is meaning you're watching the show live, meaning not not that it's happening live, but like when 8 o'clock show comes on, you're, watch, you're sitting down at 8 o'clock and you're watching. Of course, now you now if you add in DVR or, or like Hulu and all these where you can watch the shows when you want, what do you think the average age then is? 40. So it's still, most people who watch TV are 40 and over. Any kind of TV. So it's not just the kids, and it's not the kids watching TV. It's 40 and over, okay? And the average, like I said, to the one, well, I'll get to that in a second, with the average amount of people watch TV, okay? I just wanted to, now, uh, I know, now we're going to go a little younger. Now we're getting to the kids. Now, the other part of screen time is gaming. Does anyone know what gaming is? Okay. Video games, right? What do you all think the average age of a gamer is? 35. 35 is the average age of a gamer. 35. Millennial, late, and then probably some generation extras. Because who came out with? My generation grew up with Atari, and then boom, here came Nintendo. Okay? Well, guess what? The average gamer had been playing for 13 straight years. So my generation and the generation after me, the millennials, have not given up playing video games because that was part of what we did, so they continue to play. Matter of fact, only 29% of the gamer population is under 18. That comes from GameSparks and Wikipedia articles. I know all of you were thinking, as soon as I said gaming, like you all said, teenagers. Maybe tw maybe some of you who know a little bit about gaming thought maybe 20-something. Now, I already knew that, and you, Drew can verify that, because when we were playing games, I told him, hey, you know what the average age for video games? By the way, you know comic books is about the same age, too. It's like late 20s. Yep. Just so you know. So there's a stereotype that the only people who play video games are adolescent boys. That's what most people think. 
Now, here we go. Here's a little bit more about gaming. This is also from Game Speaks, or Sparks, who was an article. Here's one I think you're also going to find surprising. More than 50% of gaming audience are women. More than 50%. Now, there is a dispute here because now we have to determine what are we talking about. Because real gamers will only think of Xbox and all that, okay? But we're talking about gaming. So we're talking, when we talk about gaming now, we're also talking about mobile gaming. And that's where women really start picking up. We're talking about, and I know all of you heard this game, or most of you have, Candy Crush, Bejeweled, all these games that came out. Matter of fact, in 2016, mobile gaming made $36.9 billion dollars that is higher than both PC, which is computer games, and console games, which is Nintendo, PlayStation, all that. And I know what you're like, Joe, why are you talking about this? Well, just, I don't think we really think about how much the person that we think are playing is really not them. And a lot of times when we start hearing these things, like, oh, wait a minute, I play games. Because there's, Summer likes to play those war games. You know, there's that nice war game, and then you play someone else, and then they come back and play you. I don't know if you know if there's games that you can play that where you do a word and then later on they come back and you're playing back and forth. It could take a day to play one game because, you know, it might be an hour later before you check it again. The point is our expectations are a lot different. And then, going back to what I said, they also did a sur Pew survey found this. 42% of women owned either Xbox or PlayStation, PlayStation compared to 30% 37% of men. 42% of women owned either Xbox or PlayStation compared to 37% of men. Now, there is a, this, there is a quotation here. When they asked the question, they didn't ask if you were the only person in the house. So they assume a lot of these were probably single moms. And they had it in their house, but none of us were they were playing. But still... More women own it than men when they call it. Now, let me be honest. Let's be honest. How many are surprised by most of the stats I already gave you? I wasn't when I found it. I'll be honest. Except for the 35, because I knew that one. And then here's another thing about games. 74, and this is 2017 or 16, I forget. I forgot the right now. 74% of KA teachers use digital games for educational purposes. So 74% of your kids are also doing gaming at school. So why did I give you all that? What does that do with anything I'm talking about? What I'm trying to explain to you is this is why I'm trying to give up less screen time. Because there is so much. We sit so much time in front of, the, of games. And I think a lot of people are surprised. Now, here's another survey. This came out in 2019, okay? Now listen to these numbers. Typical American spends four and a half hours on TV. The typical American also spends four hours and 30 minutes on their smart smartphone. Now I want you to notice that it went up from 2016 to 2019 by, and there was a survey in between that also showed. So literally, I do know that that stat is true, that about, in the last three years, we've gone up an hour or more time on it. And if you really think about it, it's not surprising. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Over three hours on a gaming device and five hours on a laptop. Because I'm guessing a lot of people use laptops or computers at work. So that's combined. Altogether, Americans are spending a whopping 17 hours of screen time. So now, granted, when I saw the comments on this, a lot of people were, wait a minute, that's impossible because that you're saying there's only six hours left to sleep and do all these other things. Well, first of all, most people, let me know, the average American does not get their normal seven, eight hours sleep. First, I, and, I, and again, I'm not saying the numbers are, it could be a little skewed on this thing, and a lot of people um, that commented on it was just, but I think people also forget, I don't know how many of y'all been to certain gyms, People are working out. They're still on their phone. 
some gyms, especially if you go to a big gym, not here, but if you go to another big gym, they already have the TVs in the all over the gym. Most gyms that I've been to, there's TVs everywhere. Watching the news, they have Fox or CNN or whatever. Even some of the some of the machines have built-in TVs. At the high school, when they have gym class, that's what they do when they do. They're, okay, we're gonna do treadmill day. You know what their kids are doing? They're doing treadmill. They're watching. They still have the screen in their face. Pump gas. I see people walking in the store. So. That's why people think, well, that's uh, impossible. But if you really think about how often we use it when we're doing other everyday things, we're still like uh, summer. She'll tell you sometimes when she's doing dishes, she'll watch a show while she's doing dishes, because that's her time to be away from the kids. So she'll put a show in while she's doing work. And again, you're still being productive. But the point is, the screen's still on. So I think if you really think about that, then it's really the numbers don't really seem as skewed as it really first appeared. But here's the thing. If you, so I said seven and a half. This thing says 17. We'll go with just, because there was another survey that said 11 hours, but that one was in 2018. So we'll go with, we'll say 11 hours. If you do the math, that means if you spend 11 hours on screen, the average American, which I think is pretty realistic based on all the studies, you sp if you sp live to be 60, you're going to spend 21 years of your life in front of a screen. 21 years of your life in front of a screen. Now you can see why. I want to lessen my screen because when I think about it, it's like, wow. And then w that goes along with one of mine that I'm talk about later. No wonder we are getting un more and more unhealthy in this country because we're spending a lot of time just sitting watching something or looking at something. And here's the thing, and this is what Paula said for a second, a second ago. And in that study, that study came out on December 26th. It was under the Drudge Report. The one about the 20, the 44. Because what they did on their seven, now in that study, if you did the 17 hours, it's 44 years of your life. It would be 44 years of your life if it's 17 hours a day, if that study is true. But this is what they said. This study was done in 2019, the research. So you can't even fathom what it's in 2020. So what does this have to do with the scripture and all that? Well, we're God. It's just simple. We need to evaluate what we're doing with our time. Now, granted, yes. You cannot get, okay, and some of you are going to argue with me. I personally cannot get rid of this. I can't. You know why? Because if I did, I have no, like I said, there's no way I can keep contact with my young adults or youth. They don't have, they don't even look at phones. Some of them don't have phones, but they have Facebook. So if I'm going to keep contact with them, I have to have it. Okay, because the world kind of made it that way, on purpose. Some big tech person said, you know what, let's just make it where they have to have it. So it's not going away anytime soon, I can tell you that. But you can manage what you're doing with it, what you're watching on it, how you're using it, and when you're using it. That's why I do thank God that Pastor leaves his phone with Brandy on Mondays. Because you need to get a break from it. One thing I will not do, and someone asks me all the time, she says, well, why don't you have your, because sometimes I'll get Facebook messages late, she goes, why don't you have your notification on? Because I don't want to be notified every time a Facebook message comes on. Because half of them are not really that important. Most of them probably aren't that important. It's just like someone saying hi or whatever. But it's meaning I can get back to them later. I don't have to know right this second. Because if you hear it ding, because if you hear your phone ding, what's your natural response? You've got to check it, right? Even if you don't want to, you're like, oh, but, oh, but what, what, but what if, you know? So we have to learn it's okay to turn notifications off. It's okay to let the – if I don't know your number, it's going to voicemail. Do you really want to – leave a message, I'll call you right back. If you don't leave a message, sorry. Now, well, unless it's a main number because I don't know everyone's number up here, I'll answer it. But any other number that's not main number, I'm not answering it if it doesn't – if your name doesn't already pop up because I don't need to waste my time with somebody trying to sell me something. Because my opinion is if it's that important, and it's not a cell person, because most people will leave a message to say, hey, Joe, this is so-and-so. Can you call me? This is what I need. And then 
99% of the time, I'll call you right back once I hear the message. Okay. Because I don't need to answer the phone all the time and all that. Because I have children, but they're more, their time with me is more precious to me always being on my phone. Always checking things. That's why I, for my family's sake, because, yes, for some of us now, granted, I watched a lot of TV when I was younger. I don't know if I watched 17 hours worth, <laughs> but I did watch a lot. So for us older ones, I obviously need the numbers. But when I start thinking about those numbers for my kids, see, that's where it's really going to affect. If they keep that trend up of everyone else, I don't want to think that my children are going to spend 20-some years of their life just watching something. So I'm going to make an effort they're probably not happy hearing this, but I'm going to make an effort to really cut back the hours they're watching screen time because there's a lot more things they can do valuable with their time, spiritually, ministerially, in a lot of different ways in front of a screen. And that's why I chose it. And the only reason I went off on that is because I think it's shocking when you really look at the numbers of how much time we're spending and again, I know a lot of you are probably, well, that ain't me. And there's some of you, and, and, uh, because of the generations, for some of you, it's not you. But some of you, I bet you, you spend more time on the phone than you really think. All right, let me go off of that one. All right, my goal number two. And this is one, actually one of the, and it was funny because when you start asking the kids, as soon as, I think it was, I think it was, uh, I forget which who said it. Y'all probably know. I think it was mine. My number one is spending more time in the Word and being able to quote more Scripture. So spending more time with God, right? So as soon as she said that, I was like, but how are you going to spend more time with God? Because that's the thing. It's very easy to say, I want to spend more time with God. Yes, it sounds awesome. It sounds good. It's a good New Year's revolution. I'm sure whoever comes here on New Year's Eve on on Thursday here, that will be one of the number one things people say. Get closer with God. And that's awesome. I want you to. But the question is, and this is what Summer is trying to, and again, Summer is the one that kind of pushed me, so I'll give her the credit, is, but how are you going to do it? Because every year you say it, but how do you do it? So when you write it down, you can see. So my scripture, I have a couple. I have actually have two to go with that one for me. And again, you might find a different scripture if that's one of yours. But mine was this. All because I said because remember, I'm not saying spend more time with God necessarily. Well, I'm saying the word which is with God, but I'm talking specifically more time in his word. It says Second Timothy three sixteen says, All scripture is God breathed, and it is youth, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if that is true, like I do, then I need to know that every scripture, every word that I read in this book is God-breathed, Holy Spirit-inspired. So if that is true, and I'm a believer, and I believe God's word, then I need to read this scripture because I need to know that I need to read this because it's from God. That's why I didn't already know that, but I got to, sometimes you got to, even as, Christians, even as leaders, you got to remind yourself, this is a God's word. Let me read it. There's a reason why God wants you to read it. And then Psalms 119.9. Yep. How can a man keep his way pure by living according in it, in this, with a question mark? So, let me, so it's saying, how can a man, young man, keep his way pure? Question mark. How? I don't know. Well, by living according According to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So again, these are my two verses to help me. This is why I need to spend more time with God's word. Because how can I even, not just a young man, not just my boys, but even me as a leader, how do I stay pure? How does a woman stay pure? How does any Christian stay pure and not fall? By living according to God's word. 
That's what we have to do. So that's my goal. How am I going to do it? Well, this one's a little more steps. I'll probably add to them, but I had to. Step one, make more time to read his word. Well, if I'm going to read more of his word, then i got to first make more time. And then after I wrote that down, then I have A, B to how to do that. Wake up early. Turn off the phone and TV early. So there you go. So I'm going to wake up a little earlier so I can give myself a little more time to read. And then I'll turn the TV off a little earlier before I go to bed so I give myself more time at night too. See? So by writing it down, I can go back. Hey, well, Joe, you said you were going to do that. How are you going to do that? Oh, I wrote it down. That's right. i got to get up early. That way if I slack one day and someone say, hey, Joe, I noticed you haven't been reading as much as you said you were going to. Oh, you're right. I can go back to what I wrote. Like, well, that's right. I haven't been getting up earlier. Duh. And you might think that sounds so simple, but it's not. Number two, how else can I do it? Make it more family time thing. Make it a more family involved thing. How do I do that? A, have a devotion time, a different, you know, expandive devotion time. Do more devotion time. B, have certain time of the day we read. Say, okay, hey, guys, at this time every day we're all going to get in our, either together or separately we're going to read God's Word. And then three, make it more spouse time. So it means Summer need to read even more together. So same kind of thing with not just everyone, it's just me and Summer. Have a devotion time. Have a certain time of day that me and her read together. But see, by writing it down, it gets you to be able to go back to how to step. It. And again, maybe these are, I don't know. Honestly, I think these are pretty two good ones that everyone should at least strive in some way. But I'm not going to. But there may be something that God's laying on your heart that you need to do. Whatever it is, write it down. And then give yourself steps to complete it. So it's not, oh, yeah, I said I was going to lose 10 pounds. Oh, wait, I didn't. Or, hey, I want to be closer to God. Wait, I didn't read God's word more. Matter of fact, I read it less. Why? Because you didn't read it down. You didn't follow what you said. And then my last one that we're going to talk about today, like I said, this is just one, is get more healthy. Again, a general statement a lot of people say, yay, get more healthy. Ooh, if Boston's here, be like, yeah, that's the way. Well, how do I do that? Well, I have this scripture. Someone might have different. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Don't you know that you yourselves are a temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Now, you know, I think it's funny because when we, a lot of, I mean, over the years I've heard this scripture so much. When do we use it? We use it for smoking, drinking, but very rarely do we use it for being healthy in general, not smoking in general. You usually don't, in most sermons I've ever been, it never went past more smoking and drinking or drugs. Because I will say, I might get in trouble for saying this. A lot of church people, there is one, there is one sin that we neglect all the time. Gluttony. We love our, now I'm saying you can't have potluck dinners. I love them. I joke with pastors, I have missed them. But I don't, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a big old preacher up here barely can walk, preaching, yeah, God loves, and he's talking about all these things, but it's like, but wait a minute, and you can say, well, Joe, you know, you're being, no, you can't ignore that, there's lots of reasons why you need to be healthy, one, if I'm a minister, I need to be healthy, because I need to be able to do my job, how am I going to go out and preach if I can't get out of bed, how am I going to be able to preach if I can't, if I, I'm starting to have heart issues stuff. I mean, I know through time eventually you are, because uh, with age, okay, eventually, yes. But it shouldn't be when I'm 40. It doesn't have to be when I'm 40, if I eat right and do the healthy things. So here's my step. Now this one's for you, sir, if you're still watching. Limit my soda intake. Okay? Well, I'm not going to call it cold turkey. So I said, have one day a week I can drink soda. Now, I will say, there was a time when I was working at Disney, I didn't, for some reason, I just almost cut it completely out, because one, I was so hot, I was drinking so many bottles of water, I probably drink like 10 bottles of water a day, but, and for some reason, I just had cut out, and then, it was only about a year and a half ago, all of a sudden, I started adding it, so it wasn't until I got back up here in the main, but not back, but I got the main, I started adding soda to my diet again, like a lot, I don't know, but I need to cut that back out. 
Number two, get more exercise. There's another one. Oh, yay. Well, I didn't leave it with just get more exercise because, again, it's too general. So what I say? Well, walk more. How do I walk more? Find a time of day that I take a walk. You might say, well, dude, that's kind of simple to write that down. But I needed to do that because I got to figure out, okay, how am I going to do that? Because one thing I'll say, when I di- one thing I will say about Disney, I was probably very healthy at Disney, because when I walked around Magic Kingdom, I walked miles and miles and miles a day. And I sweated 90% of the time because it was hot. So I was losing, so I was in pretty good shape in that aspect. So I did a lot of walking. As a matter of fact, when we worked at Disney, the Magic Kingdom, you had to park in this parking lot way far away from everyone else. Then you had to walk and get on a bus. A bus had to take you to it, to the site. And then where I had to walk, it's kind of funny. It's like, I'll give you a Disney insight secret. The, for cast members, it's reverse. Where you walk in the front entrance, that's the back of the park to us because we come in from the other side. So our entrance is at the back of the park, so behind the castle, way back there is where we come in. And there are tunnels. You can see it on this channel. There's tunnels on the ground, so we walk on the ground get to our place. Well, for me, I my office was at the very f- all the way on Main Street, which is the front for the guests, so I had to walk a long way just to get to work. So if I got, or even when I got off the bus, I still had a good seven minute, either a five minute run because I was late or a seven minute walk to get to where I had to go, depending on the day. Well, because one thing about Disney is they have a clock and it's union wide. And even if you're third, you have one minute, but if you go 101, you're late. And they don't, it's hard for them. Unfortunately, I think that we've had a lot of accidents at Disney because workers were late, and unfortunately some fatalities. And usually it's because of a cast member gets hit by a bus because they're flying, because they're trying to get to work usually. Because it's very, if they're very strict on the clock. But that's a different story. But the point is, walking, I gotta walk, I gotta get out and walk. All right, good thing is Dawson's not here, they're here this one. But I wrote it down. To lift more, go to the gym once or twice a week, and then do push-ups or sit-ups when I'm at home. I'm glad he's not here because he would be saying, come on, come on, which I need. You know. And then number three, simple, eat more fruits and veggies. You know, eat more. And I will say, eating-wise, I actually do, I eat, probably eat more vegetables and fruit than the average person. Not as much as my wife, but the average person. And that's the thing. And that was just my last one that I'm going to share. But but as I do this, because, you know, Summer challenged me, so I'm going to do more. Summer said I needed ten. So. Seven more. But I'm also going to do some challenges, like for me personally. I'm going to do some challenges that I'm going to write down for ministry. How do I get these? Because, like, Summer, and again, I'll give Summer credit. She, she pushed me. She goes, okay. Because I said, okay, I want to add worship, which I did. We started adding more, a little bit of worship. But she goes, but Joe, you need to write down. How are you going to infiltrate the worship into the youth group? How are you going to get them involved? Write it down. Figure out how it's going to work. So maybe you're not in ministry. Well, you're all in ministry in sense, but maybe at work. How am I going to be more productive at work? How am I going to be more this at work? How am I going to be more that at school? Maybe you're going to college. Maybe you're going to school. You figure out you can. your goal could be, because I know a lot of students are like, I don't my goal is to be better at school. How are you going to be better at school? Well, I'll give you all some advice over there, my sons and Hannah here in school. Number one, study more. Spend less time on the game, more time in the book. I know it's not as fun, but that's how you can study. You know, I always tell the young people this, and I tell a lot of pe- I tell young people when they ask. Sometimes the, I've I've said it to a lot of them. So raise your hand, say, I need prayer. I'm like, what's your prayer? I have a test today. I'm like, well, let me ask you a question. Did you study? If they say no, I'm like, well, I'm not even going to pray that prayer. Because this is what I do believe. I don't believe God's going to help if you don't try to study. I don't. I don't think God's like, okay, you were lazy. You're not going to study. I'm just going to miraculously give you an A. I don't think God works that way. I think God works. Look, if you put your, if you honestly are struggling in an, a subject, but you actually studied every, the best you could, I think God will help you then. I do. I think that's how God works. I don't think he's just going to 
Okay, I have a magic wand. You didn't do nothing. You were lazy. You knew you had to study. You chose to do nothing else. You want an A. Here's your name. Don't, sorry. I tell them that. It's like, look, I will pray that as long as I know you actually study. If they say, yes, I did study, I'm like, all right, then I'll pray God will bring those, those answers to your head, that those things that you read will be revealed. But if you're going to be a student, if there's someone out there who says, I need to be a better student, then you got to write your steps down. How am I going to do that? Probably the number one thing is spend more time on your, on your work, study. So maybe you're at work, whatever job it is. Maybe you want to be more productive at work. And you got to write it down. How am I going to be more productive at work? Well, instead of showing up right at two minutes before work every day, I'm going to show up ten minutes early so I can talk to the boss and actually think about what the project is that my boss wants me to do. Plus, guess what? Word of advice, if you start coming 10 minutes earlier to work, your boss will notice and you will have favor. I know, I speak from example, on both sides of this spectrum, depending on the job. But uh, no matter what you do, always do it for the glory of God. So whether whatever the goal is that you wanted to set, and again, there's nothing wrong with goals. If you don't have goals, then you don't have nothing to shoot for. But if you want them to be successful, as my wife reminded me, it's best when you write them down. And then give yourself some steps. And then maybe you might have to find someone to hold you accountable. And then don't get mad if you tell someone to hold you accountable, and then they do. You get upset. Well, I, don't I want to lose weight. Okay, well, when you say... Honey, I really want to lose weight. Or honey, I really want to do eat less sugar or whatever because my heart or whatever is wrong with me. So, Lord, so, so, honey, when I go for the bacon, please help me when I'm getting ready to order. And then when you go to the restaurant and you get ready to order bacon, you're like, now, honey, you said, well, leave me alone. I want to order bacon. If I want bacon, I'll eat bacon. You know, don't do that. Okay? If you really want the goal, don't set yourself up to get, be a bad spouse or something. Or the other way around, you tell your spouse, you know, now I really don't, I, I got to give up, you know, sweets. And then you go for sweets and you're, they tap you on the hands like, don't hit me, that's my, you know. You can't do that. Because, trust me, people do that all the time. Pastor will speak. P I know because pastors had people in his office. They've told him, please hold me accountable. He holds them accountable, next thing they know, they yell at him. It's like, well, you, d you told me to hold you accountable. And then. More than at least five times since I've been here, he's had that happen from five different people. But I think as the new year comes, because, and there's the thing, going a little bit on with what Pastor said this morning, because I believe everything that Pastor said. And I will say, and I've told Summer, and you can ask Summer, I've said this for years. I said this to Summer. I was like, Summer, God can't bless us, this country. Until we stop abortion. I've, always, I've said that for years. I was like, it's impossible for God to bless us. So well, the reason I bring that up real quick is because what Pastor said is true. 2020, if you think 2020 is bad, hold on. Because I know there's a lot of people going to have a lot of false hope on New Year's Eve. Because they're putting their faith. No, there's a lot of people putting their faith that when that clock turns 12, that life's going to be better because that year's behind. That's not how life works, first of all. If you're having a problem with addiction... 2020, it ain't just miraculously going to go away when you wake up in 2021, unless you put some work and effort into it, and some prayer time. So I think with this year coming, it's going to be important more than ever, and this is why I'm challenging myself, and probably why I'm listening to Summer even more than I normally do, which I should have, you know. But, because I do know, I'm just being honest, it's because I do know 2021 or 2020 has nothing on what 2021 is going to bring. It's already shaping. I mean, it's already, it's like Pastor said, it's already hit, written on the wall. I mean, you can already see it. So I need to have some goals so I can help myself get through. And I think having goals, having marks to hit, and then whatever your mark is. And like I said, for, for you, maybe it's something else. Maybe you need to be more outspoken. Maybe you need. Maybe God's leading you in a direction and you've kind of not gone that way. And you're like, no, I, I need to step out in faith and do what God asked me to do. Maybe someone's watching. Maybe God's calling you to be a missionary. And you're like, you've been 
saying no, 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 and now you know. Okay, no. 2021 is the year I finally put some steps forward to do what God asked me to do. Maybe it's going to be a minister. Maybe it's going to be a new job. Whatever it is. Maybe it's an addiction that you keep struggling with. And you're like, no, this is going to be the year. Then you got to write down, well, how am I going to, if, if you have a problem smoking, how am I going to quit smoking? How? Write it down. Well, number one, stop buying cigarettes. Number two, if I can't buy, stop buying cigarettes, hey, you know what? Give your money to someone else. Right? If if you're if you have a spouse and they're more, what's the word? Um, not the word where they're more like, okay, no, you're not going to do it, and they can hold you more accountable because they're not struggling with the same thing you are. Then discipline. That's the thing. Discipline about this. Then you know what? Maybe first time you got to hand them the money and let them take it. Whatever it is, you make 2021 the year that you don't just make some great proclamation just because everyone else is doing it or I'm at church and pastor put me on the spot, so uh, I don't know, be healthy, and you just randomly throw something out there. Start praying. Say, God, what is it? Not just 2021. What is it that every day you want me to do better? How do you want me to get Because some of those things, like healthy, that's still an honoring God because, if, like I said, if you're healthy, then you can do more work for God. You can go longer. Whatever it is, make 2021 the year that you finally keep your goals in progress. I don't know how many years in the past. It's just like, oh, here I am. I'm right back to where I was. You get better because it's always January. You do good. Woo, yeah. And then by Easter, it's completely gone. Usually probably by February. Whatever you're working on is done. And I think part of it is because, like Summer said, you didn't write it down, so you didn't have something to go back to. But I do believe God wants his, Christ his, his people to, you long for him more in 2021 than ever before. Because this return is coming sooner and sooner. And I know it's been said every day of your life you've heard sooner. But hey, you're one day closer. Whether it's you go before the rapture or not, you're still one more day closer to your meeting to him. So let's make every day a better day. A stronger day, more educated day about God. Let's commit ourselves to be more spiritual. Because you know what? We have a task at hand. And that task has not changed, but I think it's increased in its importance, and only in the sense that because we are closer, and we are seeing things happening around us, there is a lot of people in this river valley that need to know Christ. So we need to step up, even more so this year than any year before. All of us still have family and friends somewhere around here, or at home, or in whatever state, or wherever, that need him still. So we need to do better, so we can be a better witness too. So Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I know it's a different kind of message, Lord. But Lord, I pray that you challenge everyone here, Lord, including myself, Lord. Anyone listening or who will listen later, possibly, Lord, that you will challenge them to set some goals, Lord. Not just to do it because someone asked, but because they want to make their life better because ultimately they want to be closer and be more used by you. Lord, any goal we make should be a goal that draws us closer to you. Someone might say, well, how is being healthier closer to you? Because, Lord, you can use me even more if I'm healthy. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with everyone here, Lord. Lord, that you'll speak to us. Lord, in this 2021 approaches, Lord, that we start getting on our knees more and more, Lord. Because, Lord, this country is in dire need of you. Lord, forgive us, Lord. 
Lord, I pray this nation will turn to you, Lord, and forgive us of our sins of abortion, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, of making a mockery of what you called marriage. And I'm not just talking about guy and girl, Lord. I'm talking about even in the church where almost 65% of people in the church are married or remarried and remarried and remarried, Lord. We've made a mockery out of what you established, Lord. And, Lord, there is forgiveness. I'm not saying, Lord, that if someone's done that, that they can't be forgiven. And they right. That's not what I'm saying. But, Lord, in the church, I mean, in some churches, Lord, they don't even, they even let people be members who aren't even married and are living together, Lord. Lord, even the church has lowered our standards, Lord, to the world's level, when really we should be trying to get the world's standards to your level. Not the other way around, Lord. Lord, let us reach for higher things and bigger things in 2021, Lord. Lord, and I believe you're going to do it. Why? Because I do believe that there's a lot of faithful people in this church, Lord. Starting with our pastor, Lord, who wants to see your will be done in 2021, Lord. Lord, I believe there's a hunger in this congregation, Lord, to see people in the River Valley saved and come to know you, Lord. Lord, I believe there's a hunger in this church to see people broken of their addictions, Lord. Lord, it's so awesome that there's so many testimonies already in this church already, Lord. But, Lord, I want to see, Lord, I want to see triple that, Lord. Quadruple that, Lord. Lord, I pray that there will be healing in this church, Lord. Lord, I pray for my wife, Lord. I pray for her back, Lord. Lord, I know you can heal her, Lord. And I know it's your will to see her, Lord. Not struggle, Lord. Lord, I believe in a healing touch, Lord, in 2021. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I believe this is going to be a year where people aren't going to be able to retain themselves, Lord. They're going to be so excited to express what God is doing in their lives, Lord. I believe strongholds are going to be taken down, Lord. I believe there's going to be healing in families, Lord. There's going to be people reunited with brothers and sisters and even fathers, Lord. Lord, we live in a community where there's so much fatherlessness, Lord. But, Lord, I believe that you're a God who can change hearts, Lord. I believe, Lord, that there are fathers who are sitting in jails, Lord, and just sitting home not with their children. Lord, I pray, Lord, that this is a year where you just start stirring hearts, Lord, and families are reunited, Lord. Where children are reunited with their fathers, Lord. But not just some father, but a father who's changed and who's in love with you. Lord, I pray for every empty seat that's here, Lord. Because, Lord, I want to see every seat filled. Not because we want to make some great, you know, great oh look how great how many people but because each seat is represented by someone you touched and brought here and you healed lord i want us to get to a place where we have to pull these other seats back out lord and forget the covid restrictions because we're just so full lord that god is touching and healing and that we're making such an impact that they won't even care what we do because we're making such a greater impact on the fact that people are being broken from strongholds and addictions that they're not going to worry for a little bit over their restrictions, Lord. Lord, you're a God who can do that, Lord. Lord, I pray for this nation, Lord. Lord, I believe that this nation is just as divided as it was in 1860, Lord. I think you can see that in the vote, Lord. Lord, I pray for unity, Lord. But only unity under you. Not under science, not under any politician. Unity under you, Lord. Lord, I pray for this state, Lord. I pray for our governor, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you start speaking to her, Lord. And in a, a week or so, Lord, as the legislation gets back in session, Lord, that you just start speaking and touching lives there, Lord. Lord, I pray that 2021 is a year of revival across this nation, Lord. Lord, I pray this is a year of repentance where we get back to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that people will wake up and realize that abortion is nothing but murder. 
and it is a blot on this country. Yes, we have a lot of blemishes, Lord, but I don't think there's ever been one bigger than abortion. Lord, I just thank you. I praise you. Lord, I'm excited too, Lord. Not just, Lord, I'm excited because we just got to celebrate the birth of your son, Lord. You sent him the joy that he brought, the peace, Lord, the hope and salvation is through your son. But Lord, I'm also excited because I can't wait to see what you're going to do in 2021. Lord, you have done amazing things for this church in 2020, Lord. It is amazing what we were able to do through COVID, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. Lord, but I can't imagine what it's going to be like in 2021. Because I'm believing for bigger and better. Lord, again, I pray for every person that's here. I pray, Lord, that they are willing, Lord, to stand with Pastor Lord. Because he's going to need some people to stand with him, Lord. Because I believe you put a mission and a vision on him for him in 2021, Lord, but I don't think it's going to be one of those kind of visions that he could do all by himself. He's going to need a team of leaders. He's going to need a team of worshipers, Lord. He's going to need prayer warriors, Lord, so this church can grow spiritually, financially, in numbers, and most importantly, souls won. Lord, it's amazing. Just the two years I've been here, Lord, we had, I think, five baptized last year, six or seven this year, Lord. Lord, I pray for 27 next year, maybe 107. Lord, it is possible. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we fill that lake so much, Lord, that people can't help but look. What is going on with all those people down there? Hallelujah, Lord, I pray that that baptism, Lord, is so full with your spirit, Lord, that people can't contain themselves on the shoreline, Lord, because they're excited to see a new soul won for you. Lord, it says that if just one is saved, that the angels cry out in joy, Lord. I don't know why your saints down here don't. Lord, there should be nothing more exciting to us than to see someone saved. Someone grasped from the pits of hell to eternal life with you. As a Christian, that should be our ultimate goal. And that should bring us the most ultimate excitement. Lord, I love you. I praise you. And Lord, As we close, Lord, I just pray. If there's anyone, Lord, watching or anyone here who doesn't know you, Lord, and they want their 2021 resolution to be to know you for the first time. Lord, I pray if there's someone watching, maybe they'll watch a week later. Lord, that they will reach out and say, I want to know Christ the King. Lord, I pray that if there's anybody who wants prayer, who wants to know you, Lord, that they will put their trust in you. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here, Lord, who struggled through 2020 because of COVID, Lord. Lord, they struggle with some kind of addiction. Lord, they fell back into something, Lord, that they used to do, Lord, or maybe they're still doing it, Lord. If there's someone here or someone watching, Lord, that 2020 was a bad year and they forgot to put you first in a lot of ways, Lord, that they repent now and move forward to 2021. Lord, if there's anyone watching who in 2020 had a bad year, maybe they lost somebody to COVID, Lord. Maybe they lost someone to cancer or someone and someone that they love, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you give them peace and let them know that even though that person may not be with them in 2021, 
that you're with them in 2021. Give them that peace and comfort to fill you in that midst of lost that they have. Lord, I pray if there's someone in 2020 who had a bad year financially because maybe they had to be out of work for a while. Maybe their job closed, Lord. Whatever it is, maybe they're watching. Lord, I pray for a restoration to their checkbook, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they put their faith in you and not the government, Lord. That they're not just sitting there waiting on the stimulus check, but they're waiting on you to deliver, Lord. Lord, I pray that they put their trust in you and you alone, Lord. And that you will bless them, Lord. That you will bring financial blessing to them, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone in 2020 who maybe they had a relationship fallout or with a family member or a spouse, Lord, I pray for restoration there, Lord. I pray, Lord, you start working now, Lord, that in 2021, Lord, that they can work that out and build a stronger relationship, even stronger than before, Lord. Lord, I'm believing a lot for 2021 because I know you're capable. I know you're still the God who's on the throne. You're still King of kings, Lord of lords. And if we just turn to you with our issues and our problems and we just put our 100% trust in you, Lord, you're not going to fail us. Because your word says so. Lord, you say that your ways are not mine. Lord, that there's things that I won't be able to understand. But just because I don't understand them doesn't mean that you're not working in my life. Lord, your word says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And Lord, I pray that... This is the year that we believe that as a church, as an individual, Lord, that we can do all things through you that strengthens us. Because as our sign says, nothing is impossible with you, Lord. Lord, for those people who feel lost or broken, they feel like there's no way out, let them know nothing is impossible with you. There's not one stronghold you can't get them out of. There's not one addiction that you can't break them of. There's not one there's not one place that they can go that your presence aren't there with them. That peace, Lord. Lord, if there's someone in 2021 that made a bad mistake, maybe they did something wrong, Lord, again, there is forgiveness in your son. Lord, let them instead of living with guilt, let them live with forgiveness. Lord, let them come to repentance. Lord, I love you. And most importantly, Lord, I just thank you for your son. And again, I thank you for what 2021 is going to bring to praise. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Lord, one last prayer. Lord, I pray for Pastor and his family, Lord, as he gets ready to lead us. Through 2021, Lord, that you'll give him vision. Lord, that you'll give him goals, Lord. But most importantly, Lord, that you'll let him know that you're with him always, Lord. To strengthen him, Lord, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, Lord. Give him a triple portion, Lord, of your spirit, Lord, in this year, Lord, as he leads us. And, Lord, as a congregation, let us, Lord, follow where he goes, Lord. Not because it's him, because we know that he's been on his knees before you. And, Lord, that's an awesome thing to know that we have a pastor who doesn't do his own vision. He only does the vision that you lay on his heart. So, Lord, thank you for that. And I love you and praise you in Jesus' holy, wonderful name.